Long arms or short arms, what do you go with? In this week's video of the Parts Room Podcast, we're gonna dig into this and see which one's right for you. Maybe not necessarily which brand, but which long arm kit is the right one for you. Welcome to the Parts Room Podcast presented by Exodus 4x4. Today, we're gonna talk about long arms. We had a lot of people hit me up in comments, DMs, talking about long arm kits and what's the, I don't know if they want to know what the best long arm kit or they just want to know when and why would you do a long arm kit. So when we talked about what we were going to talk about this week, this is what Tony, Tony and I concluded and Tony's come up with a nice list of questions. <laughs> so, and we have some actual facts. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> All right, so the first one here, uh, long arms versus short arms. What is the difference? I feel like that's a that's some low hanging fruit right there, isn't it? Yeah, well, it, I mean, the obvious it is the obvious. It is, except for I do get asked that quite a bit because yeah, most people don't, most people don't realize you're going to cut brackets off and you're going to move the mounting point, so they're trying to figure out yep. in the non invasive way what they mean, and it is very invasive. So let's start off with uh, long arm versus short arm. Obviously, it's it's a longer control arm, and it uh, the intention is to correct the geometry of the suspension when you as you raise the vehicle up. But it doesn't always necessarily mean that you gain more travel. That's often. The case is that your tra travel is determined by your shock length and spring length, but you could take the same suspension, the same springs, and the same shocks, and change out the the control arm setup to a long arm suspension, and it'll ride better. So I, you know, standing at the counter talking to a customer, I've always used kind of like your your arm is control arm reference. Well, control arm reference, but you know, as as a way to describe it, so. This would be short arms or factory length arms, and then this would be your long arm kit, right? I can't give out specifics about what length of, you know, aftermarket setups do this or that, you know, or as far as length goes uh, versus stock. But I would say you're ty typically going to probably add about 10 inches of control mm -hmm. arm length and somewhere around there. Uh, I, again, I don't know exactly I, what it is. I looked that up. You're right. You're dead on. Um, Evo versus anything stock on a, on a JL is over 10 inches. Yeah. Flight. There you go. So, Look at me. Yeah. Yeah, Look at you. Out of Nothing but facts. Like we promised. Nothing but facts <laughs> <laughs> until they we are. Always, and then we, yeah, we can always roll it back tomorrow. It's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we, what we do I is we make one day. podcast and then we make another one the next day where we go in and, and we fact check ourselves. Leaving <laughs> our clothes here. So, so it seems it's the same day. Yeah. 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 You just yeah. change your shirt out. <laughs> Installation difficulties, pro versus shade tree. Now, this is a very, very good time to bring this up because we were just talking about this at the, right before we started uh, recording. And so we're a professional shop uh, that does professional installations of long arms. And then you guys got it out there that will sell parts to and they'll do the installs. Or we'll sell them to a customer and he has his buddy do the install. Um, this is a, a classic example. We took the body off a while ago. This is a, a JT that I sold all the parts to, 100% sold the parts to. And now it's here at my shop for the installation of the V8. And we take the body off. We take the drivetrain out. And now we're getting a good look at, up the skirt of this vehicle and how the guy did the install. And for all intents and purposes, when we first saw this Jeep, we were like, man, this guy did a really good job. You know, the Jeep was really clean. Um, I think the owner of the Jeep is super particular about it. And he did a really good job on the stuff that he installed. But then we look at the upper control arm mount, or no, I'm sorry, the control arm mounts for the long arm kit were never welded in properly. And then a bunch of other stuff that was done as far that you couldn't see had you otherwise taken the body off. None of that stuff was done uh, as cleanly as it should have been done, you know, not to knock the guy. I mean, f for the most part, he, he seems to understand everything pretty well, but it wasn't done correctly. Those control arm mounts should have been welded in. And had he gone very far in that vehicle and done some actual real intense, um, off roading with that thing, those control arm, they, those control arm mounts wouldn't held up. So I think certain kits are okay 
for the shade tree guy to install. And then, but there needs to be that, that there's a line that you don't cross. If you're doing a bolt on kit though, you, that doesn't necessarily mean that it shouldn't be done by a professional, but if you're a super competent person, then you more than likely can do a bolt in install fairly easily without worrying about screwing it up too much. Now, the welding stuff, you know, there's guys out there that may not have a, sh uh, you know, shop. They may not be professional suspension technicians or whatever, but they're extremely capable and smart guys that totally could do this and, uh, you know, a full welding kit themselves. I'm not saying that it can't be done, but it helps to have a lot of experience doing the same kits repeatedly. And I think that's where this guy's, uh, you know, he fell short. Well, let's talk about what's available out there. Now, I'm not going to bring up a ton of a ton of kits. I'm going to bring up what I think is is what I'm familiar with, what I like. I'm going to talk about Evo's uh, high clearance long arm kit. Whether you're buying it for the JK, the JL, or JT, I don't care. I think that Evo's high clearance long arm kit is for a kit that you can buy. But I think the Evo high clearance long arm kit is the hands down the best. Now, what makes it a high clearance kit? They move the control arm brackets from the bottom of the frame up to the side. So the front lower control arm is now on the, on the side of the frame instead underneath it. Why is that important? Well, you don't always have to do that. But if you're a guy that likes to rock crawl is Wrangler or whatever else you got, then those control arm mounts being underneath the frame are going to be your limiting factor, I guess, when you go. You're probably going to uh, high center on those. Other kits that are out there, I'm not a fan of three link kits as much as I thought I was at one point, but, <laughs> but you know, there's, there's some brands out there that use uh three link mounts and I'm not, I just, I don't like the way they look. I don't, just bottom line. I don't like the way they look. I don't like the way those kits look. I'm not saying that those brands are necessarily bad brands. I just don't like the way it looks. Um, I think, I don't think you're going to gain more than what you risk by going with a three link kit. I mean, sometimes there's just no way around it. You have to do that. And I've been there, but I don't think that, I don't think that the risk out, out outweighs the reward in that case. I think Clayton makes an excellent kit. I like their stuff. It's good stuff. And they make a, they make a lot of, I would say a universally ad adaptable long arm kits where it's like, here's the brackets. You weld them in, you figure out where you need them, put them, weld them in done it and it works may not be the prettiest kit but man they make good strong stuff and then the bolt-on world that's more of a welding kit also so i think i think when it comes to bolt-on stuff i think rock crawler teraflex they make some good bolt-in parts but maybe not rock crawler i think there's still some some welding that's involved in there teraflex definitely makes a bolt-in kit so it's synergy i think synergy makes a bolt-in long arm kit as well really really yeah, yeah, yeah. We've done it. But I think I went ahead and welded it in just, just for the hell of it. Yeah, I didn't give Synergy enough recognition in this topic. They make a good long arm kit. I like their control arms a lot. I think out of everyone's control arms, I like theirs the best. Quality-wise, I like the Synergy product. I think the best. I think it looks the best. I think it, and they, they have good parts, really good parts, and designed really well. I think a lot of people want me to tell them more about, like, which long arm to kit to get, and I just can't. You can't do that realistically. It really, every, like I've always said, the reason there's so many available is because there's so many ways to do it. There's so many different ways to build your vehicle, your you know, off-road vehicle that you need to pick which one is best suited for what you're going to be doing. Just because I like something and I think that's the best one doesn't necessarily mean that that's gospel. Like, why wouldn't you do a long arm kit? I mean, that's an obvious one. It, 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 you know, let's talk about that for a second. What, what are some of the setbacks of that? And I guess one of the reasons would be cost, obviously. Uh, when you start diving into, for instance, the Evo high clearance kit, like we talked about, I mean, that's a full welding kit. So you're going to go in and you're going to remove the gas tank. You're going to cut the brackets out, including the lower control arm brackets on the rear uh, axle. You're going to cut them off and you're going to weld in new brackets on the bottom, you know, the lower control arm mounts on the axle. You know, weld in all new mounts, you know, take some time to dial it in get it adjusted. That equates to a lot of time talking about just a control arm kit by itself, parts alone, probably going to be running you close to three grand nowadays. And then the labor itself probably going to run you close to three grand. I would say easily, you know, you're going to be sitting around the six to $7,000 range for a really well 
built and a uh, professionally installed just the long arm kits themselves that's not including the shocks and all that other stuff if you were doing a complete suspension you're just doing long arms so that's a that's a big financial decision to make you know what's right quality work to you and you know i get that thing a lot of i get a lot of guys that are like hey man i'm building this thing but if my wife takes it to go get to the grocery store or whatever i don't want her to hate it also so you got that you know every now and then when your wife's riding, you know, or significant other, whatever is riding with you, you don't want them complaining about the ride because, you know, it's never, I think we've all been there where our wife's sitting in the passenger seat bitching about how much money we spent. You spend that much on this thing and it rides like this or whatever, you know, like you didn't even like, get, you didn't get seat warmers. Oh yeah. That one was hard. That was hard. That was hard. Yeah. Cause that wasn't wrong. It wasn't wrong. She wasn't wrong. <laughs> wasn't wrong. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Weird. Drop brackets. This is a good one. Uh, drop brackets versus going long arm. It's a thing. If you're um, if you're not going rock crawling, absolutely, you can cheat it a little while by by doing drop brackets. Even before going to uh, adjustable control arms, you can do drop brackets. I don't recommend cam bolts on the axle end of it. That's never something I recommend doing. But drop brackets, there's nothing wrong with drop brackets. It does help a lot. In fact, uh, out of personal experience in the new, newer platforms, JT, when we did the first lift, we didn't quite know what we could do for long arms on it. So we did the uh, what they were calling at the time was the overland package, I think, uh, Evo's kit. And we put the drop brackets in, and we were able to run coilovers on it. Guys, listen. If you've been listening to this podcast, you've been watching this podcast, and you like it, share it with people. Tell them. These idiots are entertaining. We got good feedback from you guys about, you know, what to what to talk about, and we're, we're doing that. If there's something out there that you want us to talk about, let us know. If it seems like that's what a lot of people want to talk about, then, yeah, sure, we'll talk about it. But, yeah, let's get out of here. I'm hungry. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time on The Parts Room. So, guys, make sure if you like this episode of The Parts Room Podcast, you go on and subscribe to it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. If you want to watch the video, make sure that you go to Spotify, where you can do both. Thanks for tuning in.